Coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. It's early in the morning, so I'm I'm not used to doing these this early, so I'm like trying to wake up. And so is Little Bear. He's he's already back to sleep actually. <laughs> so it's okay, I'll wake up and we'll we'll get through this. Um <clears throat> let's talk about the stocking. So for this video, we're actually gonna go through the rest of Santa's body, Santa's robes. I like to think of them as Patrick pajamas. That's what they remind me of. So we're gonna do the rest of Santa's Patrick pajamas. Um, and then the next video, we will go over how to make the toys. And those are a lot of fun, um, but that is a whole video in itself. And I'll tack on the lining as well. Um, I'll show you how to finish it all up so it looks like a really cool stocking. We're gonna go over a few things. Um, a lot of it's a bit of troubleshooting that I will talk about in this video. Um, we're going to talk about how to applique a piece on when you got a lot of beads and sequins around and your thread keeps getting caught. I'll show you a trick that I do that helps. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go over how to attach your cording. I know last video I talked about making cording. This video we're going to talk about how do you attach it. Um, I will show you how to make the bag and the blanket stitch around it. We'll talk about some tension in your stitches and how you can make it work to your advantage. And then we'll talk about how to um, get rid of some of those pesky lines on there. What do you do when some of your pieces aren't fitting, whether you overstuffed, understuffed, or just wasn't printed totally correct. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get pieces that aren't printed correctly at all. And we'll talk about that too. Uh, so a lot of troubleshooting today in this video. So let's get started from where I left off last time, which was the right side of Santa's patchwork pajamas. This section here um, has a combination of five different felt pieces in it. And I had to do a little bit of embroidery work. I have a bunch of French knots on the red piece. It's outline stitching there on the blue. That's a straight stitch in the green where that red um, stitch is at. <clears throat> and then I had to do some sequins and beads. A lot of that is filled with stuffing as well to give it some dimension. And then I had to move on to this beautiful gold piece that I'm going to go in a little bit more detail on. Let's talk about this beautiful gold piece right here. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of gold sequins and I pair it with gold beads, which is not what comes in the kit. It's not what the instructions tell you to do. Uh, I am using leftover gold beads from my Christmas angel kit that I made my mom. And I just think when you put gold beads on the gold sequin, it just makes that color come out so much more. So that's something you can do if you want. Um, other ways to personalize your kit even more is by buying different colored beads, uh, buying different shape of sequins. You can find those online and you can make your kit really your own. Another thing I want to talk about with this piece particularly is look at how many sequins there are and I have to applique this piece on. So for anybody who's done kits before, who's, who um, is kind of seasoned in this, you know what happens. You try to get a stitch going here, and then you pull it, and then it's just gonna get caught somewhere. Of course, this is like one of the few times it doesn't wanna do that. But um, here, let me see if I can get a good example. There we go. So you can see how it's getting caught around my bead. That's what usually happens, by the way. <laughs> so it didn't want to there for a second. Um, and it's just the most annoying thing ever for a lot of us. So the way I get around that, I've gotten pretty good, is I'll catch, you know, do my applique stitch, and when I'm pulling, I actually turn my stocking upside down to let gravity kind of help, and it brings the string down so that it doesn't get caught on all the sequins that are around on my stocking. 
Um, so I can show you that again, where I just take a stitch and I'm literally turning my whole project down to let that whole string fall and then it doesn't get caught. Um, and I, I don't do that with all of my appliques, it's just mainly when I feel like my string's getting caught a lot on the sequins. So that's one way to get around it. Once I finish with the upper section of Santa's Patrick pajamas, um, I had to move on to the drum. And that just included me making the upper section of the drum here, as you can see. And then I had to make some cording and attach it. Let's talk about what it says when the instructions tell you to make six inches of cording. So it didn't tell me how to make the cording, it just said make six inches of cording. So <clears throat> I had to think this through. Thinking of the process going backwards, when we make cording, you have to fold it in half, right? So if you want to end up with six inches of cording, you want at least 12 inches of floss to begin with because you got to fold it in half. And then when you think about it a little bit more, you're going to lose a little bit of thread just from the twisting process and then the knotting process at the end. So you want to give yourself even a little bit more than just 12 inches. You want to, I gave myself 14 inches. Um, so I measured 14 inches out, cut it, twisted it, folded it in half, knotted it at the top. And then when I measured it, I ended up with exactly six inches of cording. <laughs> so you lose a little bit of length when you make some cording. Always give yourself more when you measure out your, your floss just to make sure that you're going to end up with the right length of cording. You can always cut down your cording once it's made rather than give yourself extra because if it's too short, you just got to make it again, right? Um, and then I had to attach my cording. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually attaching it to my piece here. So let me see if I can get this a little bit closer to the camera. And I have my little um, pin here just to help me hold it in place while I work on this first line. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna take my needle and I'm gonna bring it up through a little piece of the cording, which I'm just gonna go here, okay? Pull it through. And then I'm going to go back, not in the exact place that I went, but close to it. I'm just going to snag a couple strands to secure this to the felt piece, and I'm going to pull it through. And that is going to secure this felt, this um, this cording to my felt. And I didn't just, you know, do it here and here. I did a few different ones. You just can't see all the ones I've done so far. So that when I take this needle, this little pin out it should stay there and not go anywhere. As you can see, it's not going anywhere, which is exactly what I want, okay? And I'm just gonna keep doing that. I believe it's supposed to go down and then up and then down. And um, my plan to get this to come down correctly is I'm actually going to loop it a little bit up here and make a small loop, not as big as I'm gonna show you. And then once I make that little loop, I'm gonna have it come down and it should give me a really nice little triangle there with the cording. And the nice part is with this piece, uh, piece number 40 is gonna go right over it so you will never see that loop. So then I'll have another felt piece hiding that loop and then it will look like, I just have like these little triangles it's making. So there you can see my cording um, all attached. You can see the little loops I had at the bottom before I started attaching the extra felt pieces to cover those sections, but that looping really does help you get that nice triangle look. Um, and you can see there's the drum all completed. And then I had to put on some trim in the middle of Santa's pajamas, get the bottom of his pajamas put together, do all the embroidery and the sequins, all that work. And then I got to put on his shoes at the bottom as well, which was just a really quick, cut applique stuff process. That stuff just goes by so fast once you're used to it. Then I had to put on the trim on the bottom. Um, I didn't know this by looking at the picture before, but the trim is actually a front and a back piece with some stuffing in it. It gives it even more dimension. You would never be able to tell looking at the original picture that they use for advertising it. So that was kind of a cool thing that I learned. That's working on the right side of Santa's arm and then it was time for me to start the bag. So that's what I had uh, all completed before I had to put the bag together. 
But before we go on any further, let's take a quick little bear break so you can see what a summer has been like. Um, here are a few pictures of him. He's just so cute. He has been loving the kiddie pool. That's him a little wet because <laughs> he loves water. And uh, he's just adorable. Um, a little sneak peek of our next video. He let me put the snowman on him and he just like sat there really still. It was very adorable. Okay, let's get back to our project. Right now I'm working on Santa's bag, his sack. It's gonna be stuffed with a bunch of toys in here. And these little markings you can see are for the blanket stitch. And I've already gotten started on it. And I have done this stitch before in some of my earlier videos, but I'll show it again real fast just so you don't have to keep trying to find it. Uh, obviously I've already gotten started here and I'm making them a little tight. You don't have to make them look like this. You can make them looser. I'm purposely making them tight to give some tech give it some texture um, to the bag. And uh, the way I am doing this, as you can see here, I'm gonna put my needle through the front where it's marked one of my blanket stitch lines here. And then I'm gonna push that needle through, pull it out from the back, and notice how it's made this nice little loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle and put it through the loop like that, and then I'm going to pull it. And I'm making mine a little tight, so I'm gonna pull tighter than I would with, you know, another project that maybe I don't want to make it pucker so much. And that is a stitch right there. So I got the bag all put together. I'm working on this little patch here, as you can see. Um, but I wanted to show you what it required in order to make it. Um, so the front piece here is actually two felt pieces. Uh, stitched together with a blanket stitch and then this back piece here is a third piece um, in order to make it a sack the bag part and then I put together um, that little patch on the front I had to do some embroidery work and then attach it it makes it look very patchy um, a little detail so yeah as I mentioned before you can use the tension of your stitches to give your felt some texture so I pulled really tight with my blanket stitch so it'd have like this puckered look I just wanted that bag to look a little bit more like it's stuffed like it's just gonna be full so that's why I did that usually I don't pull that tight with my stitches I kind of just let them lay there um, comfortably without seeing a lot of puckering um, but I just use that to my advantage this time so something you can think about too uh, and then afterwards, I had to put this bag onto my uh, stocking, which took me a while. So let's go through that. Right now, I'm attaching the bag onto Santa. And we talked about how this bag is three layers. You'll notice that I'm attaching the very back of the bag only. And in the instructions, it tells me to do only a few small stitches. But when I thought that through, this bag just isn't going to be very stable, especially if I plan on putting a bunch of toys in there, which... I will eventually be making. So I'm just attaching the very back layer so that it will be stable and I won't worry about it going anywhere because I want this to last a very long time. This is a very tedious pro process um, just because of all the sequins and all the other felt pieces around um, just because the strand wants to get caught on the on the beads and it's just awkward trying to place it with everything that's around it. This is definitely an intermediate part of the kit. Everything else I feel like has been very beginner friendly up until this point. So this will take you a while. Um, it's taking me a little while, but I'm sure at the end it's gonna look beautiful. So this is what I got so far. Let's talk about pieces that don't match up. And a lot of that comes from overstuffing. I'm a big stuffer. I love to stuff my pieces so they have a good 3D effect to them. As you can see here, the trim is pretty puffy. Um, and that causes me to not always have the most perfect piecing together <laughs> with these. I have to fudge a little bit. Uh, and one place, let's see here, that I'm gonna point out is in this green piece here, I had a white line that just didn't match. And um, actually you can see it in the picture too. If you look real closely, there's a white line in there that just doesn't get covered up. And I'm having the same issue with my own, uh, with my own green felt. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. My first go-to is scratch it off with my needle, and I did that a little bit. Um, there's still a little white in there, but you can barely even tell. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Over the years, that will go away. Now, let's talk about 
black on white. As you can see, they those are very obvious lines. They're not like the white lines where they're kind of faded already. They're very obvious and I had that issue down here in between where anytime I moved this, it showed. I could see black lines. Um, and I couldn't get my white felt moved over enough to cover it. So what did I do? Well, step one, take my needle and start scratching a little bit. But if you scratch too much, your felt's gonna get really weak. You could actually act, end up with a little hole from where you did your scratching. So you don't wanna do that too much. That's just the top layer. And then another trick you can use is think about a decorative stitch that maybe could cover up that area. For me, I chose an outline stitch, one, one strand, and I did a quick outline stitch to cover that up. And the reality is when people look at it from afar, they're never gonna be able to tell and they can't even see the black line. So problem solved. Those are my little tricks for covering up those mistakes. And if you never point them out, people won't even know. And that is so true. No one's gonna ever know the mistakes that you make. I mean, you guys know my mistakes, but that's because I want you guys to know how to fix it, right? So I have to show you my mistakes. But I mean, you see me, I'm like stretching pieces. I'm putting different embroidery bead sequins over my mistakes so you don't see them. That's because when people see my stockings, they don't even notice them. And that's gonna be the same for you. Whoever you're giving your stocking to, a fan member, a friend, or if you keep it for yourself and they come over and they see it, they're gonna be like, wow, that's absolutely beautiful. Because it takes a lot of time to make these and there's a lot that goes into them. So don't get hung up if you make a, mis a mistake somewhere. It's gonna still be so beautiful at the end and you're gonna be very proud of yourself for making one of these. Okay, let's move on. So I had to go to the right side of Santa's arm, that right arm, and I finished it off by putting the mitten on, attaching it, stuffing it, and then I had to move on to the other side, to the left arm, and I came across something very interesting with one of the pieces. I just wanna point out piece number 68 here. I am currently sequencing it the way that the instructions say to, but notice how there aren't any dots. I think they forgot to print them on. So I just wanna give you a heads up, you're gonna to have to eyeball it, but it should look just fine. We're just gonna get it close enough, and with everything else that's on the stocking, nobody's gonna notice if the spacing's a little off. Right now I'm working on the arm, and as you can see, it has a lot of different pieces to it, and I'm currently just trying to sew it up. Um, there are 13 pieces to this arm, and it takes a lot of embroidery work, and the way that I put it together, I actually do it a little differently than the instructions said to do. They told me to get the gold piece on first and stuff it, and then to do the green mitten, and then to do the trim last, I decided to put together the back pieces. That way, when I sew it up, I can just stuff it all at once, and I'm not doing one piece at a time. So it just feels more like a whole unit, like a back piece to the front piece. So of course you can do it however way you want, but that's how I thought it would be easiest. And I am almost done getting this thing put together. So Santa now has his arm, and getting the arm to fit on the way it needs to sometimes can be a little difficult depending on how much you stuff, um, because Things like this don't always completely line up where it shows the picture or where the lines are showing. I have a picture here of this area where these black lines are showing. Now coming back to the video, you can see that they are mostly gone. What I did in this case, I didn't feel like any kind of decorative stitch would work to hide the lines. So I basically just took my needle and I scratched at the lines and I scratched them away like towards the back so that they would hide. And that's pretty much how I got them to go away. And that's good enough for me. Once I get the gingerbread man in this little pocket here, I mean, no one's gonna notice and I can't even really tell that lines were there. Then I did the upper trim um, and I took a side picture so you can see how thick that trim was. I stuffed it a lot and I did several stitches to make sure that it would stay on securely so I weren't, wouldn't worry about it popping off. From there, I had to go on to the beard, and there were a lot of pieces to this beard because there's a front and a back piece, and then all those little circles that you can see that I hadn't cut out yet. So I went ahead and did a satin stitch on the beard to do the mouth, and then I did an outline stitch on all those little circles and put a bead, a sequin and a bead in the middle. Cut them all out, sewed them on, 
And then, as you can see here in this picture, there is a back and a front piece to the beard, so that made it uh, possible to stuff it. So I stuffed the beard, attached it onto Santa. <laughs> he looks so cute there. And then I put the mustache on, which makes him feel so complete. After that, there is Santa. That is all there is to him. And afterwards, we're gonna move on to making the toys, which is gonna be for the next video. Thank you so much for watching Stitch and Bear Time. Um, I have another video coming up very, very soon. I'm thinking next week, maybe sooner if I have time, but I'm thinking next week. Um, and we will see how I finish off Patrick Santa in his Patrick pajamas. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the subscribers and the likes and the comments. I appreciate it so much. I'll see you all soon. Bye.